Well, hi there. This is a special edition of Rook, recorded live in front of a sold-out audience this week at Theatre Aurora in Aurora, Ontario, Canada. On the night of Tuesday, May 7th, we're going to give you this in two parts. The second part will be posted in a few days and features Najmit Hansaz, John On, our six-year-old special correspondent, and a tribute to and performance by the legendary So Lee. But right now, this is the first part, featuring our roundtable with Keon and Bahodor, an interview and a great little song from Dr. K, and a performance from Sabo Zameni and Babak Amini that you don't want to miss. This is Rook Live 2, Part 1. It's May 7th, 2024. Hi there. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Salam Dustan Aziz Durud Basham. I hope you are well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. Welcome to episode 322 of Rook and welcome to Rook live in Aurora, Ontario, Canada. We're gathered here again to give you a Persian show. Back up here somewhere in rural Ontario. Another room of immigrants who are mostly Iruni. But call all the Canadian people around here, Khadiji. Vai, 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 vai. That's your part, ready? Do it. Vai, vai, vai. You didn't think I'd make you hear this song again, but Chahesh Mikudam, simply sing along, my friend. Original music and lyrics done by Jian June, and better than any fucking modern talking tune. Never heard that band. Never heard of that band. Bye, 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 bye. Nice. You came to Canada hoping for something new. Maple syrup, hockey, and a Starbucks too. But it hasn't quite been what you hoped it turned out to be. Richmond Hill is now just one big shulukh kababi. <laughs> it's day six of the encampment protest at the U of T. Student types and activists chanting passionately. But among them, there are very few Persian occupants. Let's face it, you're not going to catch Iranians sleeping in tents. I need five-star hotel. Bye, 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 bye. One more time. Bye, 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 bye. This show is meant to be a whole lot of fun with no intent or agenda to offend anyone so we wouldn't want to get too political and invite controversy even if we're all thinking mag mag hominy <laughs> bye 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 really too much bye bye we hope you will enjoy this special night in swoon like a feast of Kubi there and Khoresh de Badem June. We've got Saba Babak, Kion, Najmed, Dr. K, Bahadur, and the legendary Soli. <laughs> and a lot of cologne and perfume because we're Iruni. Everybody! Bye, 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 bye. So they can hear it in Australia. Bye, bye. Let's get ready. Here we go. Let's get started. This is Rook
Hi there. Welcome to episode 322 of Rook. I'm Gian Gameshi. Hello to you from Aurora, Ontario, Canada. Salam Dustan Aziz Bashuma. We are live here in Theatre Aurora. And wow, Theatre Aurora, hello. It's a great vibe here for those of you listening anywhere else. We hope you can we can transmit this energy to you over the next 90 minutes. This is our second live Rook show in a theater ever, and I've got two familiar folks for those who listen to our weekly podcast to kick things off with me on here on stage. He is an Iranian Canadian engineer and a YouTube star with millions and millions of views on his popular YouTube channel where he compares and contrasts languages and cultures. Please welcome Bahodor Alast. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, it is amazing and it deserves those millions and millions of views. And she is one of the original cast of Rook was a regular on our show for the first two years. You can see her, her in our Talking to Persians London documentary. She's an Iranian-Canadian blogger, MC, traveler, financial guru, Kion Nademi. Yeah. The fabulous Kion. So good to see you both. Welcome. Good to see you too. Hi. Nice to see you. I should mention, um, normally in this p uh, point of the show, we have uh, Smart Pega, who's part of our roundtable and our, our roundup and such an important member of our team. She has had a death in the family just in the last few days. We're sending our thoughts and love to Pega and her family. And um, we really miss you, Pega. We wish you were here with, uh, enjoying this as part of us and uh, with us. And uh, we're thinking of you. In the meantime, um, this is, uh, I, I mentioned this the last time we did this at Theatre Aurora, but I know both of you are Iranians in, are Iranian Canadians of the extraction that you have been living in this country for a long time. And in fact, even living in this area, like you're a Richmond Hill kid, right, Bahadur? Yeah. So um, I, I mentioned this last time, but that, that my life was flashing before my eyes at the idea of doing a show in Aurora for a, with a, a, the packed room of, you know, a, a big theater of, of Iranians. First of all, I thought the authorities would be called, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it, for those of us who grew up here and of a certain vintage, so we lived through the, the I mean, for some of us, the 80s as kids or 90s and then the early 2000s when there was nobody around um, of Iranian descent. It is quite amazing what has happened. And I, I just thought you might reflect on that before we get into our actual round ta table discussion. Bauer, do you want to uh, say? It's, it's really funny that you say that because I, I recall when we were in high school, coming up to Aurora was like, going to another country. It was like so far away. It was just like, when we would come up here, there would be like four or five of us. You walk into a bar, everybody's staring at us. They're like, oh, who are these people? Like, why are they here, you know? Now you come up here and you see like Persian stores everywhere. It's a completely different vibe. To get basset, don't you think? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. enough of that. <laughs> Keon? Well, I grew up in Halifax, so it's even worse than that, I'd say. I was probably <laughs> the only Persian kid in school. <laughs> and you know, you know how that is. You've experienced yes, that. Yes, <laughs> I have experienced that. Yeah. yeah. And so, how do you how do you feel now when you're in this larger? Uh, I, I mean, I felt like I feel like I didn't fit in then, and I kind of don't fit in now because everybody's just come from Iran in the last ten years. And they're like, <laughs> why don't you speak better? What's wrong with you? you know? We're kind of the in between. We don't belong there. We don't belong here. So it's it's uh, it's a little confusing. I'd it say. is. It is. But it's also thrilling. Right. It I mean, it's just it, it, the the idea that <laughs> it, it just keeps surprising me. Like the idea, like in downtown Toronto, to suddenly find a place that says like Chelo Kebab, and you're Don't just you like, what's that? happening here? <laughs> yeah. The best part. And what the would first you... time I remember talking to you about this, Bowdoor, when when we were doing when those demonstrations were happening with the, the Mass on Amini, the, one of the one of those times when we were not the one up here at Richmond Hill, which was wonderful and but kind of expected because the community is up here. But when we were walking down Young Street downtown in the thousands with Iranians sort of, you know, proudly, you know, showing their expressing their pride of being Iranian, it really was. It felt like a watershed for us. Um, although it also seems like a long time ago, <laughs> which I'm going to get into with our roundtable in a moment. I just want to mention what a lineup we have tonight. Coming up on this show, Sabo Zameni is going to be performing. Dr. K, one of our favorites, is going to be up here on stage. Kayvon Mirhadi. Najmit Hansaz, the Iranian-Canadian boxer. Babak Amini and the legendary Soli will be here. Uh, we have a special surprise for him, I hope, or and we have surprise guests uh, also as part of this. So um, that's all coming up. 
for those of you who listen to our show regularly or know our program, you know that we start the show normally with a roundtable. It is not at all always political. Sometimes there are cultural topics. Sometimes there are um, um, you know, funny things that we're discussing. And Keon, we might get to some of that fun in a moment because I, I want you to resuscitate something that you used to do on Rook. But, but before we get there, I do actually want to talk about something serious. And, it's, and, and it is something that has, if you, for those who've been listening either um, on an, all of our platforms right now or those who are in this theater, know that I've been talking about this for a few weeks and months. And I want to address an issue that I feel has been growing uh, unfortunately, growing and even reaching a crescendo of late. And that is the platforming um, and even welcoming of the regime of the Islamic Republic in the West, in the Western media, on campuses, etc. cetera. Um, to explain what I mean, that due to events going on in the world, um, the mullahs in charge in Iran have seem to have found that their perfect PR strategy um, and, and some Western minds, in some cases, seem to be buying it. Um, that if you're on one side of the debate on the Middle East, suddenly the Ayatollah is maybe your friend. Um, and I, I have to say, uh, I, this is a personal experience for us because we've been doing the show for four years. Four years we've been doing Rook, and I haven't been shy, nor was I for many years before that. Um, but I certainly haven't been shy about talking about the reason I can't go to Iran. I've been talking about, uh, I think, virtually objectively, there's, you know, about the nature of suppression or oppression or the nature of what happens in Iran. And all through those four years, all through those four years, of course, people sometimes say negative things uh, in social media, on our platforms. Maybe they don't like me. They don't like my hair or whatever it is. But I never had, and I can honestly say, I never had comments in our, we've never seen in our platforms, comments saying, long live Khomeini, the Islamic Republic of Iran is about liberation, you know, fuck you, this is, this, you know, the flags of the IRI, you know. And just over the last couple of weeks, no word of a lie, 50 to 100 a day, some of whom might be bots or paid or whatever, but some of whom aren't even Iranians. They're not even Iranians. They're somehow seeing the Islamic Republic as a savior or a, you know, some sort of beacon of freedom. So my question to you guys, just two years after many folks, many experts were forecasting or declaring the, uh, the regime in Iran to be on its last legs, is the Islamic Republic regime on the rise, Bahadur? Unfortunately, um, you, know, you mentioned that you hadn't seen comments like this in the past, but I had. I had seen many. Not to this extent. Um, and one thing we have to keep in mind, the Islamic Republic uh, has spent a lot of time and a lot of money in uh, not just exporting its ideology and revolution, but to portray itself to its uh, across not just the Middle East, but to the entire world as the uh, liberator, which you mentioned, you know, the one who stands up for the oppressed, which is so ironic because they're the exact opposite of that, being anti-imperialist because their ideology itself is the definition of imperialism, trying to export Spreading it, exporting it. Yes, yeah. But people, particularly people on the left in America, in the West, they really truly buy into that because they see some of them. Um, I would say a lot of them. It, it, it's, it's quite scary how many of them actually buy into this because they think that they, they don't know about the oppressive, you know, this regime that is torturing and killing innocent people. They see that, oh, here's this regime that comes out with its propaganda and, and you know, the, the way they're helping that works. They say, you know, they always take advantage of situations, especially right now, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They say, oh, look, look at all these Arab countries, they do nothing. And then look at us. We are the ones who are standing mm -hmm. up for the oppressed. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who are going to liberate Palestine and all of this, you know, false, this false narrative that they've been trying to, you know, you know, Iranian people don't buy that. But one of the saddest things that we, we said during that mass Amini time, uh, and it kind of dawned on us as we were talking about Western media or whatever, is nobody's really out there supporting Iranians, you know, that we're pretty mm -hmm. alone in the world. And it is jarring to see just, I mean, 
the women life freedom wasn't that long ago, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you know, to see within that two years or, or less, um, people with Islamic Republic flags um, joining, or, you know, as part of these uh, other demonstrations, that I feel like would have been unthinkable, which just wouldn't have been allowed, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and it puts Iranians, I feel, in a weird place because. Um, you know, what are we supposed to, uh, I mean, um, everyone can have their ideology, you know, depending on what they think about the Middle East. And certainly I have family on all sides of the issue. And so I see the kind of debates that happen, everything. But but for for Iranians where who have so passionately been speaking about what's been going on and what's happening, to see, um, when I talk about the platforming, you know, now we are we regularly see regime folks on mainstream media on you know uh, talking about what Iranians want and don't want as if they're as if they're you know popular you know they're they're, they're the elected representatives mm -hmm. where we know I mean we did this week after week on our show we tried to find people in Iran who weren't connected directly to Sepal who would speak positively and we couldn't find them you know so it's 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 jarring stuff Kian. Yeah. I'd say we're a species with amnesia. I think the news cycle goes, what, maximum a few weeks, months, let's say. So people follow whatever the trend, whatever they're told to follow, and until the next news cycle, until something else comes up. And, you know, a lot of these people that are protesting don't have a clue, obviously. Otherwise, they're protesting for massacres happening by the Islamic regime. So they're either clueless, you, you know, I don't want to say white, but white clueless people that don't have an idea of what the Islamic Republic has done in the past. Um, or, I mean, I hate to put it this way, they're pro-Hamas. And let me just flat out say, this is something I notice, it's not generalizing, but a lot of my Palestinian friends during the Women Life Freedom protests did not voice any support for us because I think part of it is because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them, wow. you know. That I'm sure that's not universal. But no, it's know, not but universal, yeah. but it's just something that I noticed. Um, you know, the, their government is being supported by the Islamic regime, so to go against that is going against their people, so it's it, kind of a it, conflicted it, it, situation. It seems to be a trend, though, uh, to Bahadur, to your point, that reaches beyond even, I mean, there was a video that circulated, you know, of a woman in, uh, on campus protest in NYU or Columbia or something, um, articulating the reasons why North Korea was good because North Korea was supporting the Palestinian cause. Yeah. And it's like, just because you're supporting the Palestinian cause doesn't you know, sort of revoke everything that's happened in history. And that's what I find is going on with, with the Islamic Republic, but even closer in a, in a more intimate way. There's a, there's a, I'm telling you, these comments, you, know, you check some of the profiles are real. I mean, no Khamenei is about liberation, hashtag Palestine. And you're like, you really think this is real, you know? And this is where I think we have to step in and not fight with these people, but try to educate them because they have been sold this idea that the Islamic Republic is actually standing up to the oppressed when they are the oppressor, right? There are people who believe that this, is, this regime is gonna come and liberate Palestine, however, whatever that means to them, right? We have to explain to them that the Islamic Republic has a vested interest in the suffering of the Palestinian people, it has a vested interest in the Palestinians remaining stateless. They are not trying to help them. They're not trying to help anyone. No, exactly. They're not trying to help the people of Iran. But they, but they, <laughs> but they don't know that. So right. that's, that's where you have to come in. I, and I have um, not just Palestinian friends, but Palestinians who follow me because of my, my videos. And they always like ask me questions about this You know, when it comes to Iran. And and I've been able to actually like talk to them and they're like, you, you know, the way you put it, it's actually, you know, changed my mind about this. Not that they were like very, very pro Islamic Republic, but they were kind of like, well, they are, they're the ones who are helping us. Do right? you find on your channel, because your channel, the whole point of it is bringing two cultures to, it feels like the world is on fire and it's a screaming match now. Are you finding that it's harder to actually book your, your programming or? Not necessarily. It's, it's always been difficult with certain, cultures and nationalities trying to bring them closer together but not not really I think a lot of people are also trying to do the same thing they they're looking for ways to create peaceful dialogue and have this sort of like 
bringing okay. people closer. Well, one thing that you both mentioned was that we need to educate ourselves about our history. And mm -hmm. I would be remiss with Keon here if we didn't um, um, talk about, Keon, you did a series on Rook in our first or second year called It's All Persian to Us, where you would talk about things that Persians have discovered uh, that we like to, I mean, you know, you know what it's like with the Iranians. Uh, um, everything is uh, ours. We, Every, we everything we like. Everything. Oh, Tom this Cruise, thing we Tom, invented. Tom Cruise, Tom Hurusek <laughs> Hudabun, you know. Um, Shakira's so, <laughs> Persian. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, so, um, uh, but when it comes to uh, war or, or defending against other nations, there was a very funny episode of It's All Persian to Us that you did mm -hmm. that I thought you could resuscitate and teach us all about our own history uh, for just a moment as we end off the round table. Sure, well, you guys are familiar with the Persian Empire, right? Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once a few upon fans, a time. Still a few were. fans, still has a few fans. We have a few fans They like here. the early stuff. Yeah, yeah, they like it. So once upon a time, there was a Persian Empire. Now, how does an empire even come to be? You think it happens overnight? You're just, oh, yes, I think I'd start an empire now. It takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of creativity, inventiveness, and uh, where to begin? Well, let's see, Cyrus the Great had to, uh, he, I mean, he was the founder of the uh, Persian Empire. Uh -huh. Uh, he freed the Jews, he t took over Babylon, um, he invented, uh, well, the first charter of human rights. Well, he passed away suddenly, and uh, his son Combes, Combeses, if you want to read it in Greek, the second, came to succeed him. Well, I mean, he had some big shoes to fill. His father was Cyrus the Great. How do you top that? Like, what do you do? Well, there was a little jewel in the north of Africa by the name of Egypt. He's like, I think I'd like that. I think I'm going to... They want to take Egypt. I'm going to take Egypt. Right. It's not so easy. They have their own empire. It's in the middle of the desert. How do you, like, what? You want to take Egypt? Yes, he <laughs> wants to take Egypt. Right. So... I he, love how this was the dialogue at the time. I think, <laughs> you know... Like, What's next? How are you, you know? honey? Fine. I think I want to take Egypt. <laughs> what do you do? Yes. You're, you're an, an empire. empire. It's an empire. Yeah. You either... Conquer or be conquered. Yes, that's yes, yes. that's that's how it is, Gian. That's yeah. how it was back then. Thank we you, don't live yeah. in that time, yes, but that's yes. how it was. Clearly. So he wants to take over. Canada Egypt. doesn't want to. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, we'd like to take over <laughs> Oakville potentially, but yeah. We're past those days, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. So the plan is to take over Egypt. Well, he gathered his army, and you know they started to migrate towards Egypt. And uh, that slick old combies. He he knew. Rule number one, know thy enemy. That's right. Sun Tzu for you. Right, thank you. Well, he studied the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and uh, he learned a little secret. Well, he prepared his whole army, each of them, with a very special shield. Mm. Like, advanced technology, man. This is like, I'm talking like, yeah, yeah. we'd make today This is how pal. we're going to win. Is, yeah. Like, this is, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. This is a real story. This is a real yeah. story, by the way. <laughs> so each soldier had to have with them a cat, <laughs> a cat, meow, you know, like the, like the pet, cat, yeah, yeah. a cat. Well, combis knew something about his enemy. Mm. They had a goddess by the name of Bastet, and this goddess, I think she was the goddess <laughs> of fertility and a list of other things. She had the head of a cat and the body of a woman. Mm. And to, in Egyptians' culture back then, it was like, like cats are sacred, you right. do not hurt the cat, it's punishable we, we by death. We fought the Egyptians with cats. Like there's cats and then there's humans. <laughs> yes. Like if there's a building on fire and humans and cats are in there, cats go out first, man. Like right, the right. humans don't matter in that scenario. So each soldier had to prepare with them, not prepare, we'll just have a cat with them. And uh, of course they marched into Egypt and yeah. The Egyptian side and through the cat through the cats at Egyptians. I mean, you know, what, what do you? It's a it's war. What do you do? Of course, PETA did not exist back then, mm, yeah. and I hate to say my yeah, ancestors. Yeah, I was going to say who speaks for the cats in all this? The Egyptians and, did. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, of course, a lot of the Egyptians feared hurting a cat because you know, in the afterlife, they would be doomed. Huh. Doomed. Yeah. The, the more Seems important like than actually the, a more humane idea than the Persians, <laughs> uh, but yes. Well, yeah. Save the cats, but yeah, okay. Uh, what to say? Were they a sp was it a specific species of cat? Was it the Persian cat? It was cats? just whatever cat they could just collect. Right. And did, so, it, did it work? What do you think, Gian? Well, I guess it the, did, The right? other side just was like, they don't want to <laughs> kill the cats. And that is how 
the Persian Empire was able to conquer Egypt and uh, become one of the greatest empires in the world. I think at one point, 44% of the world's population was under the Persian Empire. I hate to say that this was how Egypt was conquered, but <laughs> I don't know that we it's conquered. real. Look it up. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that we're advocating for the use of cats for this, but uh, but yes. Um, Bowder, did you know this story? I, I had heard about it. From my understanding, they didn't throw any cats or harm any cats. Well, oh, it's, just, it's a war. They like just held the cats. So, so really, for the Persians, it was a very good and humane oh, strategy as well. they were nice well. about it. They just this <laughs> is, now, this is really a Persian. No, we brought the cats <laughs> no, into the war and we helped them. <laughs> they yeah. made sure nobody gets killed because they see the of cat. Course, They're not yeah. going to harm anybody now. It's a, no, we're it's good, good people, man. It's Come a good on. pleasure to have both of you <laughs> back you. on the show. Thank you for doing this as part of Broke Life. Bahodora Last, Keon Nadami, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is Rook, episode 322, live at the Theater Aurora. We are coming to you on rookmedia.com. It is there that you can link to all of our platforms. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, CastBox. If you'd like to see some visuals with Rook, switch over to YouTube right now. And if you like your Rook descriptions and bulletins in English and Persian, check us out on Telegram, our bilingual channel. Uh, I should mention a big thanks to York National Realty. York National Realty is a boutique real estate company based right here in Aurora, Ontario, Canada, where we're taping this live show right now. Uh, York National provides top tier services. They are a full service realty firm that are there for everyone from first time home buyers to investors looking for new opportunities in the communities they serve. Farid Amirion and team have also made it their mission to give back to the Iranian community and the diaspora. They supported a number of Persian community and events and projects. If you are looking for real estate, this boutique firm is where you should go. Thank you to Farid and York National Realty. One of our first sponsors ever was York National. Um, okay, let's get to our next guest. You heard some claps as they were coming on the stage. She is a singer, a songwriter, a Sufi dancer, a familiar voice and face within the Iranian community in Toronto, trained in traditional singing and music at the Conservative Conservatory of Music of Tehran. She also pursued philosophy at Azad University. She released an album named John in 2018. She moved to Toronto in February 2022 and has performed in multiple events and concerts like For Iran at Tehran. She is one of our dear returning guests and she's going to perform for us tonight, accompanied by the great virtuoso Babak Amini. Please welcome Sabal Zamani. Oh, 
خانه دل تنگ قروبی خفه بود مثل امروز که تنگ است دلم پدرم گفت چرا و شب از شب بارو شد من به خود گفتم یک روز گذشت مادرم آه کشی زود برخواهم گرد ابریا حسه به چشمم لقزی و سپس خوابم بود که گمان داشت که هست این همه در دل آن کودک خوب آریان روز شو می رفت کسی داشتم آمدنش را باور من نمی دانستم معنی هرگز را تو چرا باز نگشتی دیگر گمان داشت که هست این همه درد در کمین دل آن کودک خورد من نمیدانستم معنی حیث رو تو چرا باز نگشتی دیگر
سواز آبینی بابک آبینی واو That was fantastic. Who knew you were, you're such a good whistler? Ah, uh, I know, right? Have you always been such a good whistler? Or do you like Tamarine, Mukuri? Uh, How do you become such since, a good? Since I was maybe 13, I caught in the school while they were speaking about the serious, serious thing. I was, Zamani <laughs> after. I was like, no, not again. I was in a other planet. Wow, you've been in trouble for a lot of things, but whistling, I didn't know about. <laughs> That's, um, tell, tell us about uh, Sabajan. Tell, tell us about choosing to do that song tonight. So, uh, if you don't mind, from now on, I'm going to speak Parsi. Sure. Because I can point to the better word. Although your English is great. Oh, thank you. Thank We've you. done interviews in I'm English. I'm going to sing English later for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> what um, language do you whistle in, by the way? Uh, <laughs> You're thinking of a <laughs> Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, که خیلی ممنون که امروز من دعوت کردین جو سلام به همه. آهنگی که شنیدید آهنگی بود که چند سال پیش ساختمش و مثل هر آرتیست دیگه ای شاید در شرایط پرتلاطمی بودم که درستش کردم و این شعر از هوشنگ ابتهاج بود. و اسم شعر و آهنگ تاسیانه که به زبان گیلکی یعنی حالت عجیب و زیادی از دلتنگی برای مم. کسی یا چیزی خود گیلک هم وقتی میخوام بگن چقدر یه جا سوت و کوره میگن چقدر تاسیونه اینه که من این آهنگ رو امروز انتخاب کردم به دلیل اینکه اول اینکه فکر کردم که وقتشه که یه روزی شاید اینجا اجراش بکنم hmm. و دلتنگی یعنی have you performed it before you've never never wow <laughs> mercy <laughs> that's fantastic I didn't publish publish it yet and, 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 and you wrote the melody like that uh, that uh, is that your melody yeah that's beautiful thank you so much that's, that's, that's fantastic <laughs> um Hey, uh, Sabo, I mean, this is uh, oh, wow. That that's a whole other thing now. That's a a beautiful song. Now, you recently started a band, right? Yeah. Like because I just knew you. You're a, you know Sabo who performs with all kinds of folks and you perform solo, but you you're a part of a band now. What's yeah. the story with this? Be خیلی 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 تازگی. یا شاید میتونم بگم از دسامبر رقم خورد که یک بندی رو درست کردم به اسم In Gibberish. که این جبری شد به معنی خوزع بلاته زبون بچه گونه که معنی نداره این اسم رو به دلیل این انتخاب کردم که یعنی با هم دیگه انتخاب کردیم که بعضی وقتا می گفتیم که خب زبان فارسی بخونیم یا انگلیسی یا اصلا به این از رسیدیم که چرا هم فارسی ها نفهمن هم انگلیسی ها نفهمن پس بنابراین شروع کردیم یه سری جملات و کلماتی که فقط آوا بود ولی معنی نداشت مثلا کردیم مثلا دلم یار یار می بلگم نه یار دلگم یار 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 انگار معنی داره ولی نداره <laughs> That's great. So, uh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're playing shows, you're recording a record. What are you going to do? December, we had the first show with Farida Yusufi, Amin Buzahir, and Daiwat Jani, which is the band of the four of us. We felt that all of these با ما چارتا رقم خورد و خیلی واقعی پیش رفت همه چیز و در این حال هر چهار نفرمون میتونستیم کنار هم خود واقعیمون باشیم شروع کردیم و آهنگ ها رو همه رو به صورت اوریژینال درست کردیم الان شده هفته ترک و در صدد این هستیم که اجراهای بیشتری بذاریم و آلبوممون رو درست کنیم خیلی خوشحال شدم که شما that you're part of this program thank you so much for doing this thank you so much for performing you're such a powerful presence as a musician and a vocalist in our country and our community yeah. it's so such a pleasure always to see you thank you for doing this merci bahan sabo zameni
This is Rook, episode 322. Our next guest is an Iranian-Canadian-American doctor and social media superstar who gained international recognition and a significant social media following as a vital medical resource during the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly for Iranians worldwide and those inside Iran. He is the chief of internal medicine at Clifton Springs Hospital in New York. Beyond his medical duties, he has provided essential medical guidance to numerous injured protesters online, connecting them with trusted doctors in Iran during the uprising. And he's also the man with the amazing videos online. Please welcome Dr. Kayvon Mirhadi. Dr. K. Thank you. I cannot see anybody. So this what thank you for being here. Thank this area you. is not unfamiliar to you, right? You're the big big New York doctor, but you're actually you have some roots here? Yeah, I grew up in Richmond Hill. Um, just outside Mickey D's down the street. So. <laughs> yeah. You literally grew up outside McDonald's? They, well, you know, that was, the just hangout, put you there that was the hangout place. So we kind of grew up Timmy's and Mickey D's. That's where we were at most of the time. So. <laughs> no, you really are yeah. a Canadian. If yep, you, yep. Yeah. you added Tim Hortons. Um, I have to tell everybody this because I'm so touched by it. I asked you to be on the show a couple months ago. You, I mean, first of all, we've talked before on the program about your work ethic. You are remarkable just because you are a functioning doctor, you know, uh, who's, as far as I can tell, putting in more time than you than, than possible in, in terms of your medical duties. And at the same time, you provide these videos, many of which are not just you getting, you know, likes and followers on social media, but providing a service for Iranians. So you're this, you know, we've already talked about your work ethic. That said, you were working today, right? Uh, yes. This uh, morning, you were. <laughs> yeah. He was being a doctor yeah, in New York yeah. this morning. Then you drove here. Drove down here. Yep. With uh, uh, friend drove, Kusha is sitting down there. He was. Thank uh, you, Kusha. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Doctor K, for yeah. doing that. First of all, uh, thank you for having me. I would not. I wouldn't want to miss this. This is amazing. Thanks for having me. Well, it's. Yeah. I mean, what a joy it is to have you up here. And then, then, and that is a. I mean, that's. A, and then you're going back to work tomorrow, right? Uh, yes. Whole, tomorrow I have to go back to work. Yeah. But Patients you, are waiting for me. <laughs> so I gotta, yeah. If only my doctor felt the way you did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't tell my patients I'm coming here, so don't tell them. What's that? I didn't tell the patients I'm coming here. So oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. They'll never find They'll out. Never what are you talking out. about? You're, we're going to put these videos out. You know that, right? No, it's okay. There's, there's other doctors. They cross cover each other. So it's fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, the last time we had you on the show, uh, you were helping desperate patients and doctors uh, inside Iran during the uprising after the killing of Maswell. Uh, at that time, you were describing the medical situation in Iran in terms of access, mm -hmm. um, especially for those who were, you know, dissidents or opposing the government as being quite dire. Both doctors and patients couldn't find the medical care they needed and wanted. Um, what, what do you know about the situation now? So, I mean, um, it's not getting any better, uh, to the best of my knowledge. You know, a lot of the doctors, uh, you know, are leaving the country because of the, um, the environment they work at, um, and there's, there's going to be a major shortage of healthcare professionals, and, um, and also everything from medications to um, things as essential as, you know, dialysis machines and chemotherapy. People have to go to black market to, to get these things, and it just, you know, it boggles the mind at this point so is it um at the time you talked about the fraught situation for doctors inside iran who in some cases couldn't even um you know would be in danger if they were to help certain patients mm -hmm. what what are doctors telling you now about their own plight so i mean right now it's more about their you know job security and the environment they work in but when I was kind of helping them or, you know, we had a communication going on during the uprising, there was a lot of involvement from the, the government and the Harassad and they were not allowed to see certain types of patients. So that's when I got involved. I was getting photos of injured individuals and I was trying to connect them to doctors that are working kind of covert and undercover to go to their house and see them. Uh, I really didn't know what I was getting into, but this was like a few, several months of my life just kind of trying to help individuals that are hurt when they're outside protesting and trying to connect them to the right doctor to, to um, treat them. Okay, well, when you're that, um, I mean, you have a huge platform. You, uh, there's millions of people look, looking at your videos and um, you must be on the radar of somebody who doesn't appreciate what you're doing. 
Right. I mean, I never got any type of hurtful message. I even got messages from the doctors that were, you know, with the government. And some of them, um, we had some back and forth about, you know, uh, the ethics of a doctor and how you're supposed to help any individual that's in need of uh, attention from a medical professional. But, you know, it was it was really the focus was to, you know, try to put the help out there, see who's grabbing it and, and try to connect them to the right individuals. Okay, so um, one of the things I've noticed that you're very interested in of late is undoing, uh, I don't know if I put it this way, but undoing medical myths, um, ideas that propagate online about uh, ways in which we're supposed to uh, treat things that aren't necessarily based in science or or fact or medicine. Um, Is this particularly bad among Iranians? It's horrible. (laughs) It's it's like passed down generation to generation, and at the same time, um, we are so re- resistant to believe that this is unscientific information that's, get, that's got handed down. I mean, one example is all of you guys, if you go out and it's cold, you think you're going to catch a cold. But you really won't because... My mother cold. is right there. I know. Please I, tell this her is, this. Please explain this. Directed this. towards anyone. <laughs> but really, like, you know, if you think Lucht, about it... Lucht 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 I mean, to some extent, it's true because you dry out your oral and nasal mucus... Uh, and at the same time, you get these symptoms of a cold, but you don't really get a virus or bacteria unless you go outside and share a cigarette with somebody or kiss somebody. You know, you don't really catch a cold from that. Un- unless you go out and share a cigarette? What? Yeah, because, you know, you share a cigarette with somebody and there's all the bacteria or the virus or the COVID right. virus. Wouldn't you start with they shouldn't smoke cigarettes? Well, yeah, this is kind of like a, kind of a doctor undertone are you? that, you know, you shouldn't be smoking. But <laughs> Dr. K's <laughs> advice is when you're smoking, please make yeah, sure that... Yeah. Do not share. <laughs> Yeah. Keep smoking unless you're sick. <laughs> That's the doctor's advice. Um, can you, uh, okay, so you agreed to give us some examples of some medical myths beyond that one, of course, right. that we need to correct with factual info. Do you want to give us a couple? Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, the one thing I want to talk about is kind of like an epidemic in Iran, and probably a lot of people that lived in Iran recently, they know about it. It's, uh, you know, Bimari Hai Mogarabati or STDs that's really going around, and um, sexually transmitted sexually diseases. transmitted diseases and there's a lot of myths out there because there's so much um, you know uh, false information because you can't talk about sex openly in the country um, and one you know the most common uh, virus that's sexually transmitted is HPV so this is like a, I didn't even know about this herpes Herp, uh, no uh, human that- papilloma virus HPV oh. so when I opened oh. the page it kind of became they call me Dr. Zigira Tanasoli like this is where <laughs> <laughs> because like thousands of questions how does that translate <laughs> doctor of the words or something you know and really like thousands like i can say hundreds of thousands of questions talking about I hundreds of thousands of questions it's like it's still coming if i show you my phone and it says like uh, i just went to the swimming pool i got a wart on my genital area uh, why and i'm like well you got it from your significant other or the person you were sleeping with last night and it's not like you got so but people believe this they say okay i go get lasered I go to the swimming pool, I go to a nail salon, I'm gonna get HIV, I'm gonna get HPV. I'm like, no, this is not how it works. And a lot of people put out videos of like, most recent one I put out is a lady who's like boiling her underwear and they say, this is how you don't get recurrent infections, this is how you don't get HPV. So I kind of- Sorry, what, what's the? <laughs> it gets pretty wild. What? <laughs> what's her prescription? What, what? So she starts the video by saying like, Oh, do you throw your underwear in the uh, in the machine wash? Oh no, it's wrong. You gotta boil it. So then she brings the pots and pans and puts it in the water and boils it. And then I like make parody videos of this. <laughs> so so um, just to be clear, boiling the underwear. I mean, you're sanitizing it, but it if you help. wear it and then take it off and have sexual relationships, you're still gonna get that HPV. Uh-huh. <laughs> Unless you boil it before and after. It doesn't get transmitted through underwear. Even if you do anything to the underwear, it doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's skin to skin. So. Uh, what, what, okay. Um, what else have they been uh, saying? Um, I mean, it's a, like going back to COVID, like there was a lot of myths about, you know, putting like Szechuan on your face, like a hairdryer to get rid of the virus or drinking camel piss. And this is just like, if you go on the, if you see it. It's what, what happens if we drink camel piss? It cures the virus, like the COVID <laughs> virus. So this is a guy who actually shows in the video, <laughs> takes the piss from the camel and drinks it. And then this was like a, one thing I addressed. But it's just, just wild, I, wait, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. Slow down. <laughs> you weren't expecting all this. Uh, no, I'm. <laughs> I'm actually. I mean, uh, part of me thinks it's the, uh, the, it's a romantic idea that yeah. I drink the camel piss, and uh, it yeah. cleanses me or something. So when you debunk this, 
what kind of pushback do you get? Do, do, does everybody just go, okay, the doctor has spoken? Or, uh, or, do, yeah, they, or yeah. do they push back and go, no, I think the camel piss actually... Uh, well, no, actually the camel piss, there's a study about it that people were sending it to me, but it's really, it's like a laboratory study and they were doing like on a mouse or whatever. So people don't really understand how the scientific process works. So they're like, no, 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 you got to drink camel piss. This is how you get rid of it. I'm like, no, no. How no. do we acquire the camel piss? Is there a... First you got to find a camel <laughs> <laughs> need to need to own have a camel. Yeah, a lot right. of them actually sell their products. So if you go watch the video, they say, "Oh, if you want the best camel piss, I can send it to your house." Like that's really how they do it. You want the upmarket camel piss, not yeah, the this stuff is that, like you know, not the downmarket stuff. The Khareji, yeah. like the best. Camel uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and um, now I uh, I happen to know that uh, you ready for this? No. Okay. <laughs> You know, honestly, I didn't know Baba Kamini was going to go before me. So I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> Trust me, I, it was the same for me when I came out with the guitar. Uh, I, I happen to know that uh, when when we agreed that Kayvon was going to come up and do the show, I, I, you know, sometimes he plays these videos of where he's playing the guitar. You know, you're not a, you're a good guitarist. So I was no, like, after Baba Kamini, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not Baba Kamini is like it's like <laughs> you know when we were kids, we used to put Wayne Gretzky aside. Nobody could pick Gretzky. You have to pick the other players. You okay. know, he's he's in a different league. So, but you're a great guitarist. But um, you didn't want to play, you know, just some sort of Pink Floyd song or something. You actually um, wrote uh, a song right. over the last couple of days for yeah. the audience tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a parody song, so... Okay. Do we yeah. have, uh, let's bring uh, Super Pete. <laughs> oh my god, I can't... What's... Uh, is there a title? Oh uh, yeah, this song is called Cher to Pert. I think <laughs> the literal transport translation would be nonsense. Yeah. Yes. Is this, is this the first time you've, well, I know it's the first time you've performed this song, but is, is this the first time you've performed uh, for a crowd like this in terms of a... Yeah, everything is that I do is on the internet. Like, you know, I made some rap videos about like vaccines, but that was like over 20 takes. So this is going to be rough. Okay. It's, is that, Can this I get is, some water? Yeah. <laughs> Can we get some water for... Oh, okay. You've got your own personal... That's why I brought Kusha. Your staff water person. <laughs> By the way, I was so I was so freaking out that you uh, you know he calls me yesterday. You don't understand how stressed out this whole thing, uh, the moving parts of a show like this. He calls me yesterday and goes, uh, John, John, yeah, just just in case they stop me at the border and I can't make it." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? What do you mean stop you at the border?" You really got me freaked yeah. out. And then, I usually come with a family, like two kids, and they're like, "This guy's innocent," but me and Kusha are cross, crossing the border. <laughs> There was uh, room for error. Right? Couple of a uh, couple of Middle Eastern guys. Okay, <coughs> Certo Pert. Okay, this song is called Certo Pert. It's in Farsi, but if you want the translations, just DM me. Do you do you respond by the way to these Honestly, hundreds? Honestly, somebody of just came up to me and said I never responded to their message. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> she's sitting right there. So the answer is no. You don't really respond. No, right? I do, but it's like ongoing. And then I learned there's like a part that says hidden messages on Instagram. My wife just showed me the other day. So there's tons of messages. <laughs> It's all about Ziggy Letana Solis. Doctor K. Azizam, Zvoxan Covid Marizam, Tush Mikrochip Mirizam, Aya Indoroste. Doctor K. Junjuni, Unja Misuze Badjuri, Ziggy Lo as a bad jacuzzi. I am Michigan. Short on moment, Jushunda to Kablam as Suzunda Valley Ziggy Lamunda Holla Big in Chicago. You know, Hamet, chair to Valla Hamet, chair to Valla Hamet, chair to Peter Ziggy Loka as of Nemigiran. از همسرت بپرس که از کی میگیرم میگه سر کار دیر شده خونه همسایه دفتر اداری شده شورتاتون رو نجوشونید لطفا قابل رو بذاریم برای برنج پختن اینا همه چرت والا همه چرت والا همه چرت پرته شایعات زیاد شده 
دکتر که حلاک شده اینا همه چرت والا همه چرت والا همه چرت پرته شای آد زیاد شده دکتر که حلاک شده حالا دست همه دست حالا دست همه دست Dr. K, K Mami, Adi. There you go. That is part one of Rook Live 2, recorded this past week, Tuesday, May 7th, at Theater Aurora. We're going to give you part two of Rook Live 2 in just a few days. Stick around for that. This is full time for this edition of Rook. Uh, remember, you can find everything Rook-related at our website, rookmedia.com. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together. Super Parisa, Smart Pega, Savvy Rohan, Bearded Omi, Talented Anahita, Methodical Kabe. Find me on Instagram at Giango Meshi. Stick around for part two in a few days. Mizun Bashin.